Some Wall Street analysts have raised their price targets for PayPal to $100, showing signs of significant undervaluation to the current value. So is this one we should consider to add for our portfolio? In today, we're going to do a deep dive. We're going to take a look based on their new numbers reported at their top line revenue as well as their bottom line net income growth. We're going to take a look at the health of this company. What is their cash versus their total position looking like? And we want to ensure how their performance is, not just over the last few years, but also versus the industry. Are they performing at a minimum in line? And we're going to look at not just institutional ownership, but also take a look at insiders, whether they've been buying or selling. We'll run through some very important metrics. Now, the free cash flow share will be an important one as this will drive our valuation. And we want to understand whether or not the analysts believe PayPal is a buy, sell or hold depending on the information they want to give us. And we'll also look at another article that does give this information quite clearly. So as always, don't forget, we are going to run through the valuation model, getting to the intrinsic value as well as the acceptable buy price. And we will analyze what Wall Street as an average are forecasting over the next 12 months. So firstly, let's just remind ourselves the historical performance. Now, they are down around 8% over the last year. And if you have been a shareholder over the last 10 years, we can see a bit of a rocky ride. In fact, around 10 years ago, it was trading at $38. And we see all-time highs sitting around that $300 mark in 2021 summer. Right now, it has recovered slightly. It is trading in the midpoint of the 52-week range and a forward P that does off the bat look incredibly cheap at 13 with a market cap of 71.8 billion. Now, when we take a look at this company, it is important to note that the number of users for PayPal has been increasing over the last few years, as we can see, and is expected in FY24 and FY25 to continue to increase. So this isn't a platform that is being forgotten about. This isn't a platform where users are moving away. And we can also see when looking up their market share in 2023, PayPal does hold a significant portion of that around 42% with the second closest being Stripe and 19.45%. And then we have Shopify, Amazon and Afterpay as a few different others. Now, on top of that, it is important to note when we look at their numbers, we can see it has been increasing, going from 17.8 billion to 29.8 billion in the more recent year. So, this isn't a company, as I mentioned, where the top line has slowed down. We are seeing growth to their top line every single year, and we will shortly look at that percentage wise as well. So, top line looking very strong. They are increasing over the longer term and year on year. Bottom line, we do see a little bit of a different story. We see net income go from 2.5 billion to 4.2, which is positive over the last five years. But in terms of looking on a granular level, we do see year on year where it goes up and down. There is no consistency. So that is a little bit of something just to consider maybe when you are factoring in your margin of safety in your investment thesis. Nonetheless, top line and bottom line are moving in the right direction. So total cash versus total debt. So their cash and short term investments has increased from around 11 billion in 2019 to 14 billion, which is nice to note. And when we compare that 14 billion cash, so looking at the health to their total debt, we see it increase from around 5.5 billion to 11.8. So we can note their total debt has in fact more than doubled to around 12 billion. But when we do compare it to the top here, we see their total cash is more than sufficient to pay all of that off. So no real red flag indicators there, but we can revisit this when we look at the net debt to EBITDA metric. Now, in terms of PayPal and some of their competitors or others in a similar industry, we have Aiden, we have Block, Pfizer and a few other well-known companies. Global Payments, one we did recently review, which did look like a fairly decent company. So over the last year, we see, in fact, PayPal, no surprises there, the worst performing down 8.2%. And when we extend this over the last five years, we again see it one of the worst performing down 37%. So is this an opportunity to buy this company which has been depressed over the last few years? Or is this a company that really we should have no thoughts of adding to our portfolio? So starting off with institutional ownership, 68%. Around 10.5 billion worth of sales over the last 12 months. 
In terms of buys, well, 24.3 billion over the same period. So investors clearly have been adding or institutions, in fact, adding these companies to their portfolio. And we know not just over the last 12 months, but also in quarter four, the most recent quarter institutions have been buying. We do know, however, Q3 and Q1 of 2023 institutions were doing the opposite with the largest buy coming in Q2. In terms of looking at insiders, well, the ownership sits at 0.13% and we do see around 5 million worth of sales by these insiders. In fact, four of them over the last year. And we can see the more recent one was Q1 of 2024. When we take a look, we can see, in fact, this was the senior vice president, Frank K on the 3rd of January. So insider selling, I personally don't believe it is a bearish signal, but again, important to be transparent as we do like to look at both insider buys and sells across all of the stocks that we do review on this channel. Now, in terms of looking at the metrics, well, free cash flow per share, they have been increasing it over the longer term, 142 in 2014 to 383. And in fact, we can see whilst it is inconsistent, so not continual increases year on year, 2024 it is expected to increase to $4.81. So that is a positive sign and something we will factor in to our analysis and valuation. Sales growth very strong over the last 10 years. We do note double digits from 2014 to 2021. Last two years, it has slowed down to 8%. So again, do bear that in mind. We do look for a minimum of 3 to 7%. So PayPal, they have hit the upper end of that. But something to consider is if you would believe that PayPal is a company like those fast growing tech where you would expect double digits every single year. But again, we will revisit that. And bear in mind, the current PE is trading at around 13 in terms of numericals, well, 8 billion in 2014, we can see they have more than tripled their top line to just under 30 billion in 2023. Nice to note they have done share buybacks, as we can see, reducing that share count effectively, meaning you have more of a position in the company going from 1.22 billion to 1.11. Although not the greatest amount of share buybacks, nonetheless worth commenting on. ROIC, I do like to see consistency and a fairly decent metric. My personal look at this is I want to see 10% or more, and they do that pretty much every year. The last three years in 13 to 15% range is also nice to note, and this effectively means that management are able to efficiently allocate their capital. Operating margin consistently very strong above the 12% minimums that I look for, so that is nice to note. Effectively, every year there are no issues that we can see. Free cash flow margin it has been slowing down over the longer term, 14% in the more recent year. But again, this is above that 5 to 7% level that I look for this metric. So no real worries, no massive red flag indicators that we can see at the moment. And when we did look at the balance sheet, we did mention it does look very healthy, no issues. And for the majority of the last 10 years, we can see a figure of zero, which means it wouldn't even take them one day to pay off all of their debt net of cash on hand. So very, very strong balance sheet. So before we jump into the valuation, we do want to very briefly take a look at three of the reasons why this article that was only released a few days ago discusses why PayPal should be considered as a buy. Now, in terms of the three reasons that they mention in terms of buying or selling, the first one is that their sales growth deems to be stabilizing. Now, we did take a look at that as we saw they did have double digit increases to their top line for quite a number of years over the last 10 years. Last two years at 8%. Isn't the worst. Ideally, we would like to see the continuation of double digit growth, but something just to consider as they do deem it to be stabilizing. But again, important to note forward guidance. Margins are improving. Well, we did take a look at margins. In my opinion, they are very consistent. No real increases, no real decreases either. And historically, the stock does look cheap. However, again, when you are factoring that in to your buying or selling decision, you should really look at forward looking data as well as historical. So something just to take in mind. Now, also, just to let you know, we have released our latest free weekly article. So if you do want to gain access to this or any of our articles, all completely free, do click on that pinned comment below and you can gain instant access to start reading. We can also see another article that does this stock three or what they call phenomenal reasons. Now, this was published last month, but again, we can see they talk about how they have a growing payment volume, as we can see up over 1.5 trillion, and that's up 13% over the last year. So it is increasing. And as we did mention, the number of users are also increasing over the last few years and is expected to in 24 and 25. 
They also talk about their powerful network effects. And finally, one of the reasons which we're about to dive into now is their compelling valuation. So let's get into the valuation without further ado. And as always, if you do enjoy the content, value is being provided, smash that like button, hit that subscribe and bell button so you are continually notified of these videos as they drop. So the first model that we're looking at today is Graham's valuation. We have the stock ticker symbol, the earnings per share, the long-term growth rate with that AAA corporate bond yield to give an intrinsic value of $95, so showing undervaluation in comparison to the market value. But as always, bear in mind, we don't look at any of these models in isolation. We then have the multiples valuation model, a couple of companies in a similar sector and size. We get their average P multiplied by the EPS of PayPal to get an intrinsic value. Again, significant growth on the current market price with our undervaluation signal. Now, this typically would be the third model that we use. However, they don't currently offer a dividend. Therefore, this model is redundant. And we move on to the DCF model. Now, we can see their free cash flow year on year. On average, it is up around 20% over the period. Forward looking, we've gone for what we believe to be very conservative at 6%. That is lower than what management expect the increase to be in FY25. With the discount rate, we get the present value of future free cash flow and terminal value. Add together with the cash, subtract total debt, get to the equity value, divide by shares outstanding. And as we can see here, another undervaluation signal, deeming three undervaluations, meaning that it looks to be a buy now. So the intrinsic value for today's episode is the average of these three models coming to $107. As always, though, do let us know your thoughts in the comments below. And don't forget, you can grab a copy of the valuation model if you want to get to the intrinsic value, as well as the acceptable buy price of companies in your own portfolio or those on your watch list by clicking on that pinned comment. So margin of safety, as always, we do start off with 10% and we use that if we believe it meets the three golden criteria wide moat, strong financial metrics, and good forward-looking data. So then we keep going till it's near the current trading price, and we can see we do believe PayPal does have a fairly healthy margin of safety. So for today's episode, it doesn't warrant a 40%, but it does sit around the 35% level, which will depend on the investor, their thesis, their risk-to-reward ratio, and whether or not they do believe that this company does fit within their portfolio. In terms of Wall Street and their forecast over the next 12 months, while well, they on average see a price target of $75, they see upside of 12%. But again, this is the average that we have taken of analysts. There are some that do believe PayPal will hit $100 over the next 12 months. And in all honesty, the most important metric or one of them, the DCF model, in fact, when we do take a look at this in detail and we do factor in that growth rate of 6%, which we do believe to be fairly conservative, we are seeing an intrinsic value of $97. Now, this doesn't necessarily mean the share price will get to $97 over the next 12 months. But as always, we do believe when we calculate the intrinsic value, that is what the company is worth. And we can see a market value showing a severe sign of undervaluation based on this model. As always, though, keen to hear your thoughts. Is PayPal one you're adding to the portfolio? Maybe you've been adding it and it's been sub $60. Or maybe you're waiting things for, to turn around before you allocate and execute on this company. Or for whatever reason, maybe it isn't one that fits your portfolio. Let us know. Smash that like button if you enjoyed today's episode. Hit that subscribe and bell button so you are continually notified of these videos as they drop. And for now, see you on the next one.